when working in AutoCAD, uh, we have a function called blocks, which is basically your library components, which you use to, you do, you know, create um, elements like your, your nuts, your bolts. So in Inventor, we've got something called the content sensor for our 3D content, which, you know, nuts, your bolts, your washers, your, um, you know, extrusions and things like that. Um, but in Inventor, what not a lot of people know is that we've also got Inventor blocks. So Inventor blocks are created very much in the similar way as AutoCAD blocks are. Uh, but the functionality is a little bit different. What I would use Inventor Blocks for is to be able to uh, see movement in an object in a 2D sketch before actually creating the 3D objects out of that 2D sketch. Uh, it just makes it a little bit quicker. You know, 2D sketches is quick, a little bit quicker, you know, when just looking at the functionality. And, you know, then you can get sort of the lengths of maybe links or something like that when you are uh, creating an object. So the first thing to do is when you go and create a, um, an, an Inventor Block, under your sketch tab, uh, you'll see there's the create button. Just click on the drop down um, arrow and you'll see this create block. So by selecting create block, um, it brings up this dialog box. And what I'm allowed to do, well, what I'm going to do first is select the geometry, uh, give it a name. So I'm just going to say base. Um, I'm going to say this is for holding um, the links or something. So just a brief description of what you're doing. Uh, and then your insertion point. The insertion point I'm going to do is going to be in the bottom over here. So that insertion point is like your base point in your AutoCAD blocks. Uh, next thing, I'm going to go apply because I actually want to create this link block here as well. Just notice in the browser that your base block has been created over here. So next, I'm going to create a link over here. And I'm going to say link. Uh, my insertion point, I'm going to go put on the bottom next on the center of that circle. I'm not going to put a, a description in and select OK. Now, uh, with this, we will now go and put our, um, our constraints on. So I'm going to say, right, the middle of that line over there, the base has to be constrained over this. Okay, so it is telling me that it's over constrained. I've already constrained that when I created my initial block. So we just leave that for the moment. Now to create another link, I don't have to go and redraw it. So I just have to drag and drop it and it creates a second instance of that link. Now I'm going to go to my concentric constraints and select and start creating that um, constraints over there. Now, the block wasn't, or the base wasn't constrained properly. So let's just go and say, right, you know, that's got to be uh, horizontal. And then uh, I'm going to drag in another link over here. So we've got two instances of that link. Drag a third link in. Uh, let's go and constrain that link to this base. And then we are going to also do concentric between these points over here. So now what we've got is got this, this linkage system. And what I can do is actually move it and see exactly how it's going to work. Um, so, you know, maybe I'm doing windscreen wipers or something. Uh, you want to maybe see what the angle's in. So, uh, you know, you go off and you dimension, um, you know, maybe the angle over here. And that angle that you have, uh, you can say is a driven dimension. So. If I had to try and move this now, you see I can't move it because it's, um, you know, this is an, a dimension which now uh, sort of locks that uh, linkage over there. So what I do is I select it and I say it must be a driven dimension. So you'll see the little brackets put around the driven dimension. And now what happens is when I do select, you'll see how the angle changes uh, when I've created this. So, um, you know, maybe we want to go and change something uh, in the links or maybe change the base. So if I go to the base, I double click on it, it brings up all my dimensions over there. And, you know, the one dimension I maybe put in, let's just make this base a little bit longer. Let's make it 75, see how that works there. Click on finish and you'll see there that the, the block now has a different movement when I move it, you know, sort of maybe the, the link length is a little bit too long. So I can go into one of the links and say, you know, this is now going to be 30. Okay, you'll see all three instances do um, updates and there once again I'm able to you'll see the motion now is a little bit more restricted that the links are a little bit um, are, are shorter over there okay so you know when when having motion in 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 a in a, in a Vento assembly um, before you actually create the 3d components you can actually test out um, the lengths of of certain uh, objects that you're going to be creating in 2d um, by using your inventor block with your constraints um, and seeing exactly how it's going to work. Uh, 
um, much quicker than you know, creating everything in in 3D and you're able to just see everything quite much quicker. And if you've worked with blocks before in AutoCAD, this is very simple to bring it into Inventor. Um, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.